What's going on my welty family and welcome back. Today's lesson, we're going back to the base of TIG welding, walking the cup 101, but this time horizontal on plate, okay? I know a lot of people have trouble on that. That's what they call horrible zonal. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's get to it. Let's do this. All right, my welty family here. I got a flat piece of plate, okay? Main thing about TIG welding, like y'all saw in my walking the cup 101 on the first video, prep up is very, very important, okay? Make sure your plate is real clean, no mill scale or anything like that. Your puddle runs way better, everything just more clear, okay? Make sure there's no mill scale. Other than that, let's get to it here. Horizontal on TIG. A lot of people have trouble on this, especially if you're welding pipe or plate and it's a long plate or big pipe. They tend to have a little bit not consistent on their welds, okay? It gets too wide or it's drooping, you know, or the rod's not favoring one spot. It doesn't look consistent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show y'all how I go about horizontally welding TIG, okay? There's three ways of doing these things, all right? First of all, I'm using a flex head TIG torch, 17FV, 2% lanthanated tungsten, all right? Nice and sharp as always. Um, <clears throat> I'm using a ER70S2 1.8 filler wire for my good friends from Blue Demon, all right? I appreciate y'all, thank you for, uh, for these rods, man, they're real good, so. Now, uh, let's get to it, guys. So like I said, horizontal, they call it horrible zone for a reason. It's, it's, it's because a lot of people have trouble for it. Now, let's get to it, so let me show y'all. First things first, people like to hold it like this, some people, everybody has a different comfortability. Some people like to hold it like this when they're walking the cup, you know? And some people like to hold it like this, all right? Everyone's different. So if I'm walking a cup like this, which is I feel more comfortable doing it like, doesn't mean that you have to do the exact same thing, all right? You can do it like this or you can do it like this. Whatever you feel comfortable at the end of the day, guys. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show y'all the don'ts of walking the cup on horizontal, okay? What I don't wanna see and what usually a lot of people do when they're first starting walking the cup on horizontal, okay? So, I'm gonna show y'all right now the sagging part, then after I'm gonna show y'all too wide and then all that and this, okay? So, right now I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna show y'all the do's of it. All right, let's get to it. All right, guys, so here I'm running at mm, around 135, 140. Now this right here is a big no-no. A lot of people when they start off, they like to long arc and come down and then they like to long arc and then come down. And look at where the rod's at as well. The rod is in the bottom of the puddle and you don't want that, it's just gonna sag on you all the time. See, look at the difference. When you long arc and come down, long arc and come down, you're not getting consistent puddle. That arc has to be close at all times. Okay, this is a big no-no. Now, when I first started out TIG welding, I did the same thing, just like this, and I was wondering why, how come it's dripping on me? So, you don't wanna be doing this like this all the time, especially being, you gotta be consistent with that tungsten close to the basement at all times. You don't wanna be long arcing, and a lot of people have trouble getting bubbles just like this, you know, they get bubbles just like that on the rod. And people think that they have to go fast with the TIG torch all the time, thinking, oh, I gotta go. It's not about that, all right? So this is a big no-no at first. Big no-no. All right, let's get on to the next one. All right, guys, so this is don't number two, okay? A lot of people are running good, right? But they tend to take the rod out and weld, like they're washing, and then they add the rod again, and then they take it out, and then it adds again, you know? That's very inconsistent as far as you feeding that wire. So the rod should be burning at all times, just like this, you know? But a lot of people take that rod out and then they barely add and then it takes it out and it barely adds. So what that means and what that's telling me is, of course you're adding metal, but you're not adding metal at the same time. So then some spots are gonna be too, you know, too washy and then some parts are gonna be with a lot of metal on it. And it's gonna be very inconsistent. So this is a big no-no as well. See that big old glob? That's no good. Keep burning that wire at all times, okay guys? So, and the pace that I'm going is a little too fast as well. You shouldn't be going this fast. You'd be taking your time. There's no race to this, guys. There's no race. Take your time. 
Take your time at all times. There's no race to this. Okay? That's a big no-no. Big no-no. Alrighty, guys. Number three, another people do when they're running horizontal. They either, either the weeds are too short, like this. You see that? It's just way too short. They don't give enough time for that puddle to expand. Or a lot of people go too wide, like this. And they're like, man, what's going on? Man, what the hell? What is? How come it's not fusing? One thing is you're not giving enough time to fuse. So, so they go too wide. And that's not good. Don't be going too wide like this, guys, okay? Because then the puddle has to follow you as well about a millisecond later. So if you go too wide like this, it's very, very, very bad. Look at that. Just very inconsistent. So those are two things. Either you're going too small like this. You're not giving enough time to spread or you're letting it spread way too much and it's still not giving enough time to spread. That's number three, guys. Now we're going to go into the do's of it. Let's do it. All right, guys. So here is a do, okay? You want to keep the rod on the top side of the puddle. That is a secret for horizontal, keeping it on the top side of the puddle. You're playing with gravity a lot here. So you want to keep the rod on the top side of the puddle. I cannot stress that enough, guys. If you keep it in the middle and the bottom, like I said, it will drip on you. But if you keep it on top and just go at a good, consistent pace, okay? Look at the pace that I'm going. I'm not going fast. I'm not going slow. I'm going at a good pace. I'm watching the puddle, and I'm letting the puddle spread. And keeping that rod on the top side of the puddle at all times. Okay? Very important. This is a big do. And this will help you out a lot, especially on horizontal. And let's go on to the next do. Alright guys, this is another do as well. Now the first one that you saw was me keeping the rod on top. Now check this out guys. Here I'm going to be more consistent. As soon as I start and I stop, I'm going to stop at the same spot that I started from. Right there. Come up, come down, stop right there. Come up, come down. I want it to be consistent pattern all the way. Stop where I started, just like that. And like I say all the time, guys, there's different weaves and techniques you can do. You can, you can go tight. You can go uh, real loose, whatever the case may be. Right now, I don't have a guideline for me because I'm just showing y'all. But I'm keeping it nice and consistent the whole time. Keep that rod on top as well. Okay, look, I'm always burning that rod, too. Look at that. So, like I said, guys, I'm not perfect by no means, but the horizontal was one of my biggest things that I couldn't do. But now I can do them pretty well. But there's always willing to learn more, so. That's a big do. All right, guys, so another big do is tie-ins as well. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld out you know, a little piece, maybe about three inches. Just walk in the cup, okay? Just like I've been doing this whole time. Now, you could run a little hotter if you want to, but just make sure that rod is facing the top side of the puddle the whole time. Okay, right there. Now, I'm going to stop, and then I'm going to tie in. Okay. Here we go. All right, guys, now I'm tying in. Now, when I tie in, I make sure I go about maybe a half inch before, warm it up, then add the rod, just like this. That's a big, important thing you have to do, especially tying in. Very important, especially if you're going to be welding out a big old board pipe. You know, you got to have it all intact, making it look like you never stopped. All right, guys, there you have it. Basic tutorial, TIG Welding 101, how to walk the cup on a horizontal plate. I showed you the do's and I show you the don'ts. Like I said, I'm not perfect by no means. This was very big trouble with me starting out with TIG, and I hope it helped you out as well. But uh, like I said, guys, all the time, remember, burn, learn, and eventually, y'all going to earn. Y'all have a good one.